George Binder of Belgium is a recipient of a CTBUH fellowship in 2012, and uh, he's my hero because uh, you found a commercial model where you can go around the world and uh, and look at tall buildings and have people pay you to do that, which is which is just fantastic. He's also maintained the uh, the council database. Uh, database of tall buildings. Um, what are you doing these days? This is something that you started. Well, tell me how you started out. You started out in the 90s, and how did you turn this into a business? Well, uh, I would first say that uh, my interest for high rise started uh, with a visit to the World Trade Center in 1975 in New York City. Uh, at the time, it was not so common to, tra to travel from Europe uh, in the 70s to the States. And then I started collecting information. Uh, and before the facts, uh, I actually uh, show much interest for whatever is being printed about uh, tall buildings. Because I, I think uh, printing matters will be part of the history, especially now with the Internet, uh, where you don't know what is the source of the data that you may find on the Internet. So I still think that uh, printing documents uh, whether plans or brochure, leasing brochure, uh, is of paramount importance. Because then you, you can put a date, even if, if you don't have a date on the document, at least you, you know when you acquired the document. Um, you're also the author of a book, which is a great extension out of all of this, called 101 of the World's Tallest Buildings, which you can uh, read about and buy on the Council website. Um, Tell me about writing this book and all of the research that went into it, because this is this is a considerable volume here. I think that's what makes those books a, a bit different from whatever qualities of, of the other books is the time that we put into collecting the data and uh, finding plans. Uh, strange enough, uh, again, if we compare the printing documents and the internet, on the internet you, you find a lot of facts, a lot of photos but very few uh, plans. And of course, I, I think that uh, in connection to the data uh, related to a building, uh, it's of paramount importance to see the plan to, to understand the, the project. You cannot judge a, a project by, by the photo only. You need, you need the plan. The internet has, uh, has done so much just for the study of tall buildings and really getting everybody in the world on the same page. Can you comment about that? What's the internet? What difference has the internet made? Uh, the, the, the internet uh, made the information available to, to everyone, so that, that is a, a great advantage. But it also means that everyone is able to, to put any information on the internet and not always verified. And you go around the world and you, and you talk about tall buildings and ex, uh, exhibitions. What do you typically talk about and what are the questions that people ask you the most? What I try to, to show uh, during those uh, speeches is to, to try to select uh, major trends uh, when it comes to the region where the buildings are being built, or when it comes to the uh, building types. Uh, for instance, if you look at the building types, the, the mixed-use building is maybe not the, the building that you can see the most. Uh, the, the number one now is uh, the residential uh, b building type. Uh, previously, it was more uh, the office. But wh what is of interest, when, when you look at, at those figures, uh, is the, the fact that uh, mixed use is the building type which has the most uh, rapid and aggressive growth. The, the business economy of a mixed use, uh, I, I believe, is mainly driven by the fact that less and less uh, you have actually uh, the, the needs for office space is reducing over the time. Uh, if you look at IBM, they used to have uh, an IBM tower in Tel Aviv, an IBM tower in Brussels, an IBM tower in, IB, uh, in New York. Of course, the, the towers are, are there, but it's no longer an IBM tower in either of those cities. That means that today, if you want to build big real estate, you still need a, a major tenant. And the major tenant I, I no longer the, the one we used to have. Uh, uh, you used to have an ITT tower in New York, an ITT tower in Brussels. There was no more ITT. Uh, and so I believe that the hotel, for instance, 
uh, whether high at Ritz Carlton, is becoming the, the major tenant of, of today. We don't have I IBM uh, to fill in a, a, a building, so those hotels uh, can use the space of a big portion of the buildings. Also, it is in connection with the fact that more and more people are traveling. Uh, and, and so you, you can always explain why a building type uh, is more popular at a certain period of time. And it's, it's not only because uh, it's good for the society or because uh, we build density and we say we build uh, high rise uh, for sustainable reason. The main reason will always be the, the economics. I think the next thing that's coming along, and you tell me if you agree, is that uh, we're looking at vertical cities now that are seriously being talked about where people are going to live. Uh, and I'm wondering if that's your observation and if the perception among the people you talk to, the public, in tall buildings is changing that way. When building higher and higher buildings, uh, you will have uh, communities that will be bigger and bigger. And that is, the, I believe, the main issue. There, there is a, I, don't, I don't know where is the limit, but I believe there is a limit to the number of people uh, being able to, to live uh, in a friendly way on a single location. And also the, the way that the, the building will function uh, that uh, you can see with the ever t taller building today, uh, t only 10 to 15 years ago, a sky lobby like in the World Trade Center, when you need uh, uh, a level uh, sky in, in the upper level to change from one elevator to the other one. Uh, it was something unique and very exceptional. Only a few buildings had that system. Today, with all the super tall buildings going on in China and Asia, the sky lobby is becoming something very common. But I think it's not very user friendly. The internal uh, functioning uh, of the, the building, how you access it, will be the main issue by, by building taller and not the heights uh, by itself. Tell me about your travels and some of what you've seen and, and what you've, what's impressed you the most. Well, obviously today when it comes to high-rise, uh, everything is happening in Asia, generally speaking, and in uh, China. Uh, whether in mainland China or Hong Kong. Uh, the problem with the high-rise today is that uh, they are done by the, the most uh, respected architects in the world. But in the end, it means also that most of the cities now are looking like a, a little bit the same uh, because you don't have any more uh, traditional architecture, even if it was uh, related to the history of the country. I, I would say that uh, 20 years ago, China did have some uh, high-rise, and you could immediately see that it, it was a Chinese project because of the top, because of the, the revolving restaurant. Uh, as, as I said, it doesn't mean that the, the overall image of the building was related to the historical Chinese roots, but the, the, the way they were designed, uh, you knew that, that it was Made in, made in China. Today, you know that the, the building has qualities on its own, but you see the same qualities everywhere. And, and so the, you are losing a sense of place uh, right now. But on, on the other thing, uh, you are discovering things uh, unknown to, to European people or even Americans. And therefore, we, we don't know what the future will be. For instance, I'm talking about uh, shopping malls. That, uh, that are 25 stories high, 30 story high. Uh, who can imagine that in Europe, even in the States, where you, the tallest uh, shopping mall in Chicago are maybe seven to eight stories. Uh, who knows in Chicago that they have shopping malls of 30 stories in uh, China. And I don't say that I'm advocating this uh, type of uh, doing buildings, but what I find interesting in, in those findings is that you can imagine any use when it comes to high rise uh, of any height. And that is, I would say, very refreshing 
knowing that the, the future will bring us high rise of uh, building types that we don't even imagine today. George, congratulations on your award and thanks for coming to Chicago to see us. Thank you, Jeff.